Hey, what's up, everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with another dev stream. Today, I'm incredibly excited because I'm joined by Marcel from Native Instruments. Marcel, how are you doing today? I'm great. How about you? Oh, well, it's a phenomenally sunny day here in Brazil. It looks to be very sunny where you are as well. Was not the weather is good. Today. Was not yeah. too bad today, yeah. Got some sunshine. Is it cold? You're in Germany, right? So is it cold there already or are you still feeling the summer heat? Well, we we over the summer heat, luckily. So it's uh, 21 degrees Celsius, which is my my perfect comfort temperature. Yeah, that that sounds dreamy. Here, it every day it's 32 degrees year round. Oh wow, I would die. I do, I do. <laughs> Trust me. Like when I do the live streams, I need to have my fan on, oh, but yeah. I can't have I a the fan pointed fans. like right at me. And like, yeah, I don't have a studio fan. I'm not that fancy, but I need one. I need. I need. <laughs> uh, but Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we've got a lot to get through. Obviously, we've just teamed up with Native Instruments on PluginBoutique.com. We're incredibly excited about it. Um, and when you came in, you came in swinging because we got a free giveaway with the Freak. We've got two bundles with, yeah, I mean, just knocking them down. Two incredible bundles uh, at incredible prices. I mean, when I started producing, you know, got the classics bundle there with massive absinthe. And I mean, all the synths I always wanted, you know, in just a huge bundle at an incredible price right now. So I wish this was available back then, but it's available now for people who don't uh, have it and still want those. Uh, so we got, like I said, tons to talk about. But why don't you go ahead and let us know a bit about yourself and your role over there at uh, Native Instruments? Oh yeah, so hi, my name is Marcel. I'm living in Berlin and working for NI since six years now, a bit over six years. I uh, started out as a product specialist for a complete machine and tractor, so for all the main brands and all the sub-products. And since <coughs> one year, I've been part of a new team, which is called the User Experience and Market Research, and uh, part of the design and development de department and supporting the um, designers, product developers uh, through user-facing research, surveys, uh, prototype testing, and so on. So are you responsible for any changes that were made to some of the software that we know and love from Native Instruments? 
I'm the only one responsible, of course. <laughs> accountable. You're, you're, you're accountable. accountable. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, like my role, as I see it in a company, is kind of to re represent the user voice. Um, so we're always trying to, um, yeah, tra uh, translate the feedback that we get from artists, from users out there, from the whole community um, into uh, action items that can be, um, yeah, part of the development process for future updates and new products as well. So what are some of the more recent projects that you worked on? Uh, doing that so um, just recently we did a big survey on machine plus uh, the standalone uh, embedded uh, flagship flagship product of the machine line um, where we basically consolidated all the feedback uh, since the release of machine plus um, through artist interviews um, but also through surveys and one-to-one um, -one interviews going through the forum and basically give, getting all the feedback together um, for uh, that we know what we can improve on uh, future updates. So it see, I mean, that's a, a really great to hear that a lot of the updates and changes and really from the outset, I guess, of, of starting to build out these things, you're really paying attention to the community because, I mean, that's who you're making it for. Um, and it makes sense to listen to them. And it's great to know that you're doing that, you know, from the, the, the bigger names to just the community um, surveys that you do. Exactly. And also kind of for me, it's always a reality check to really get the first hand feedback from people who are using it on a daily basis or has, have just started <clears throat> using it um, because we also get more and more uh, hobbyists and beginners into the NI ecosystem from whatever, whatever angle they're coming in. And it's always interesting to get some fresh eyes and ears on what we're doing and um, it's always, of course, also not easy to um, make something right for everyone because uh, depending on your experience, uh, maybe you get more, um, you need different things um, depending on your job, what you're doing and your roles and your daily, the daily business. Um, yeah, but we're trying our best to um, consolidate everything and make something for everyone. And uh, uh, just a, you, it's a great segue because you just talked about Machina and we actually talked about how to pronounce it because I would say by reading it machine, but it's correct to say Machina, but I can't say machine too, right? I'm not going to. There's no wrong or right. I guess both, <laughs> both works. Well, uh, speaking of Machina, we actually are doing a contest, which isn't really a contest. You just, it's a giveaway essentially right now with uh, Machina MK3, uh, the limited edition Dynamo. Um, right now, Nick, please put a link to it in the um, the chat, and we're going to leave a link to it in the video description. All you need to do is go fill out a form, and you'll be entered to win. These are a limited edition. Do you know how many were made? It was, I believe, 750 or something. It's a few hundred. I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's limited. So, yeah, it's uh, not too many out there. Yeah, so what it, what exactly about it is um, sort of exclusive? Is it just the design or is there anything else into it? I mean, I saw, we're actually going to play a clip in a second. It looks awesome. Um, but was there anything else ad additional added to it, these, uh, the limited run here? Well, under the hood, it's the same uh, controller, so the same machine. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a collaboration with this Dynamo company who make uh, fonts and also design in general. So it was a really nice uh, collaboration um, to to make kind of a different looking type of gear. Yeah, it that's looks, not the typical it, black, you know. Yeah, I believe this one is white. I mean, it looks slick. So we're actually going to be giving away three of them. Uh, again, Native Instruments came in swinging with uh, this new partnership. So we're going to give away uh, three of them. The first prize winner is actually going to get the complete 13 Ultimate CE. The second place is going to get uh, one of the limited edition Machinas and complete 13 Ultimate. And then the third place is going to get a limited edition Machina and the complete 13. Do you know offhand what the differences are between the, the complete editions there? Well, it's uh, three, f three different flavors of, of a similar bundle. And of course, the, the higher up you go, so there's Complete 13, Complete 13 Ultimate, and Ultimate Collector's Edition. And Collector's <clears throat> Edition, of course, has all the products that we released since uh, 
since we started, basically. Oh um, along with all the expansions, which are kind of sample packs with loops and one shots and uh, presets f uh, and whatnot. Um, and the smaller you get with the bundle, um, we kind of strip it down a bit. But even the smallest bundle has a lot to offer that will you will uh, never go through in a lifetime. Yeah, I know. I mean, I can't imagine uh, the complete 13 Ultimate Collector's Edition. You would literally never need anything else. What's the the price tag on that right now? Do you know offhand? It's got to be I would massive. I to look, but I think the, the Collector's Edition is around 1,000 uh, euro or even more. I don't even know what's in the US dollar. I guess it's a similar price. I don't know. Just go on the website and check it out. <laughs> check it out. Or, or just go try to win. All you need to do is fill out a form. Even Again, better. Nick will leave a link. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we actually have a video clip of the uh, the limited edition Machina in action. Joel, if you want to go ahead and run that, it's just a 30-second clip just to show the people what they could win. So that's a quick look, a teaser, if you will, of what you could possibly win. And again, it's it's a competition, but it's not really a competition. All you need to do is fill out a form. <laughs> uh, I think I, I want to fill out the form too, but I think uh, someone would be frowning at me if I did that. But anyway, let's keep this rolling. Um, wh what would you prefer to talk about first? Uh, would you rather talk about the Classics Collection or the Future Classics Collection, Marcel? I don't really mind throw anything at me. Maybe we start with the classics, but uh, whatever you feel like. No, I mean, I'm perfectly happy to start with the classics too. So we got the complete classics collection. It's exclusive on Plugin Boutique. It's $99 and you get Massive, Absinthe 5, FM8, and Replica. I mean, 99 bucks for just Massive is a massive uh, deal. Never mind FM8 and Absinthe thrown in there with Le Replica as well. Um, I've actually been authorized, Marcel, to give away a few bundles uh, to the people watching right now on stream. So if you're watching and you want a chance to win, we're going to pick someone at random right now in the chat. Put in complete all caps classic collection for your chance to win that incredible bundle. Uh, my friend Nick's going to mark down the winner and let me know at the end of the stream and I'll announce him at that time. But let's just jump right in. Let's just talk about Massive. What um, what role has Massive played in your life, Marcel? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, I mean, it's one of the plugins that uh, really... It always sounds big, like it changed my life, but um, I'm using it daily. It's my go-to synth for whatever I want to do, for basses, for plugs, for pads. Um, I really learned when I started using it um, how modulation works with a <clears throat> synthesizer. Um, yeah. And I think it was one of my first wavetable synths, so it was also kind of, it introduced me into this whole digital virtual analog world where you can, can combine a classical subtractive synth with some modern wave shapes um, and, and waveforms. Um, and yeah, as I said, like it, it taught me um, after a few weeks using it, it taught me how, how, how big and important modulations can be to make a sound come alive and uh, really go different places. So yeah, it really taught me a lot actually on synthesis in general. Yeah, I mean, Massive was a, a first for me on so many different fronts. It was my first synth that I actually wanted to learn how to design sound in. Um, it was, you know, it's not, you just don't just jump in. It's not a basic synth by any means, but it v was very intuitive. I believe it was the first synth, when we were talking about modulation, it was the first synth that I saw or used, and I don't know if it, that is the case, but for me it was where you put the modulation amount around the parameter in the mm -hmm. color, 
and you just see that's just everywhere now. Like you won't find a synth that doesn't do it that way. So I am prob I I don't know if it was the first synth to do that, but that was the first place I experienced that, and what uh, and that's where I learned what that was all about. Uh, I remember that's a good, when it. That's came, good. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Please. No, no, no. I just, please, want, please. just wanted to add, like, is exactly this what you mentioned, like the Saturn rings around the parameters with the color coding. Yes. I remember when I when I first got my modular synth, like I have a little set of Eurorack modules. And the first night after using the modular synth going back to Massive, it kind of my head kind of exploded because I finally understood where what, what everything is doing. Because I could kind of imagine the cables um, in my hand. I was uh, patching some, some new stuff on Massive then with the color coding. So, um, yeah. Yes, I mean, it's just ingenious and intuitive. And like I said, it's not a beginner's synth, but a beginner can jump in and learn as, I mean, that's where I learned most of my, and then once you know, if you can get in and learn Massive, um, you're going to be pretty at home with any other synth because all of the fundamentals are there. You've got a step sequencer, LFOs. Um, it's just, it really is everything. And I remember uh, when dubstep was like the the musical genre, if you didn't have was? massive. <laughs> Excuse me, was? I mean, but, but if you didn't have massive, you weren't making bass. Like every every dubstep tune was made in massive. Uh, I don't know how many years ago that was, but um, yeah, just a absolutely phenomenal synth. And it's even though it's I don't know how how old is it? Do you know how how many years it's been out? It must have been over ten years now. I'm, yeah. I'm not even sure how 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 old it is but it doesn't feel old that's the thing and yeah. you mentioning dubstep i mean that's kind of part of my um, musical heritage as well as a, as a music producer i have a bunch of projects more in kind of the uk deep dubstep world not the crazy edm um, us dubstep but still i i uh, nod my hat to anyone that um has has been um like driving um the the plugin but as well the the genres that have been coming out of it um and the thing is like with massive of course you can like really easily make a crazy big noisy sound but you can also make really intricate and delicate uh sounds and also just some just some bass you know some some basic basses not like a crazy overdrive uh, cutoff uh, turning turning to 11 thing, but also <laughs> just a really nice subharmonic, warm, um, warm sounding bass sound. So um, I think the sonic spectrum is um, unlimited. You can make everything with Massive once oh, you get hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, um, pads. I think, you know, I've got my oh, a lot of synths and I usually go to certain synths for certain things. Obviously, mm. uh, I mean, they can all do almost anything, but I would say my go to for massive has always been bass, you know, from any range, like you said, where drive is off the charts to just a nice clean sub. It's simple to do um, uh, to, to pads, like really just character driven, detailed pads that um, really just push the boundaries of what you can do with just sound design in general. And again, this is from a synth that's over a decade old. It's just, it's amazing. And and if you, and it's not like you get a new synth and it, the sound quality is just so far away from something that came out so long ago. You can still get, you know, sounds that belong in, in 2020, 2021 from that synth for sure. Totally. That's why we also released some uh, just recently some new preset packs for Massive. And there's also kind of third party websites that sell preset packs. And whenever I go through new presets, it's kind of always a, a new fresh sound to my ears, even if it's the same engine. But since the engine is so uh, well done, um, you can still take it to new frontiers and uh, surprise yourself. Oh, that is a that's a really good point. It's another really good reason to have massive because the preset packs, the quantity, the quality, and the diversity of the preset pack market for massive is insane. I remember just having 
folders upon folders upon folders of any genre you could imagine. So yeah, I mean, I, I think I think we've gushed about massive enough, but I mean, it's really it really is the synth to have. I think, um, especially uh, you know, looking at the rest of the synths in here, it just it just massive. Um, but let's keep going. Talking about big bass, I remember you know Skrillex. I don't know if you've heard of this person. Uh, Sonny is, is what I call Sounds, him. Sounds don't you mean? He was a big fan of FM8 for his bass sound design, which, you know, everybody kind of made the Skrillex bass with Massive, but Skrillex was using FM8. So why don't you give us kind of an intro to FM8 and what it is and maybe why it's different from Massive? Well, yeah, um, maybe you heard about the DX7 from Yamaha. Um, that's kind of, that was uh, uh, kind of the the, the father, uh, so to speak. Um, because before we did MF, FM8, we did FM7, which was more closely related to DX7. And again, as you know, or maybe not know, DX7 was one of the first digital um, FM uh, synthesizers in the 80s. Uh, I have actually a DX7S um, here um, in the studio, which I um, turn on every now and then just to get some uh, some nostalgia. Uh, just the presets <laughs> uh, sound uh, so familiar with all those uh, 80s sounds, but you can still make uh, something different. And yeah, FM8 was kind of the next iteration to make it even more complex. and. For those of you who don't know, like FM synthesis is just an, uh, its own way of synthesizing sounds with uh, basically two um, two oscillators, one operator and one modifier, and um, together you can make really complex, uh, harmonically rich sounds um, that you could not make otherwise. And traditionally, it's being used for kind of uh, bells, uh, turbular bells sounds, um, kind of roads, piano, digital piano fakes. Um, but you can also make some really crazy sound effects. And um, myself, I learned using FM8 with a tutorial. I, I can't even remember where I got it from. It was kind of a, a course on FM synthesis, which happened to use FM8 as, as the synth synthesizer. And I really learned you doing FM synthesis with FM8 um, because it's not something that's um, that comes so natural because it's really mathematical. You need to sometimes to have the right um, ratios between the different operators to make uh, harmonic sounds because it's really easy just if you click around to make really disharmonic, crazy sounds. And um, to really learn doing FM synthesis, you I guess you need some um, onboarding or some some background or some experience i would say um but again like the sonic spectrum is uh, really different from massive because it uses a different way of synthesis and you can have the um, as i said like the classic um, bells or piano sounds but also um really um, amazing evolving pads and and lead sounds and as you mentioned also basses so once you get it, you head around what FM synthesis is, like how the basic um, structure, I would say, of a patch um, looks like. You can really take it uh, to different levels. And FM8, since the since it has such a great visual interface, it's really easy to program, because usually an FM-based synthesizer is really hard to program because it's just numerical values with faders you need to move around and hope hope for the best mm. and with fm8 you can see the patch in a, in a visual way like the matrix how the different operators uh, and the different oscillators are working together um so yeah it's really really deep and uh, complex synthesizer um but if you uh, have a nice tutorial you can really learn um how to yeah sound design with fm8 as well doing fm synthesis yeah it is um like as i said i, I kind of started learning about sound design with massive and then opening up fm8 it was a little daunting because it is a different way to create sounds but that is key to getting something like a project together where you know you don't want to make well, you can absolutely make every sound from massive, but it's nice to have something sonically different 
from a different style of synthesis like FM8, you know, or if you want to manipulate samples like with form, like there's just it having all of those different methods of creating sound that are a little bit different and produce different results and combining those together is just uh, definitely something you should be doing as a producer, I would say. So definitely, and I mean, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to just play presets, it's uh, it's good to have different synthesizers because the different synthesis methods <clears throat> will have different sounding presets, just uh, different um, different textures, different um, uh, sonic, um, like the harmonic spectrums will be different. So even if you compare a uh, uh, a, a square sound in, in FM8 or in Massive, it will sound a bit different. Just the the character will be different. And if you want to learn sound design, um, I think it's always interesting to uh, learn something new because if you learn, for example, if you were using subtractive synthesis all your life and you start learning FM synthesis, this will also get some give you new ideas for subtractive synthesis again. So one informs the other and once you go down the rabbit hole, it will always lead to new um, crossings where you can go left and right and back and forth and just uh, get inspired all the time. 100%. 100%. So what about Absinthe 5 then? What, how is that new, different or similar in any way to Massive or, or FMA? So yeah, um, Absinthe is a thing on its own. I would say it's more related to Massive if you compare Massive and um, FM8. Um, but basically it has um, a lot of different sound generators or oscillators. So you have classic oscillators that just use a single oscillator, but you can also do FM, so combining two waveforms that modulate each other. But you can go really crazy, like resynthesize stuff with samples you can import. Um, we have a granular um, engine in there that can um, yeah, use a really small, tiny part of a sample and make an oscillator with that. Um, and it has those morphing kind of um, wave shaping tools where you can um, get from a really simple waveform to a really complex, rich harmonic texture. Um, just with those uh, wave shaping um, modules. So um, I, I would say from from the three, it's the most most advanced sound design tool. Um, also needs some time getting used to it because it's just a different way how how you um, make a patch, I would say, from scratch. Um, and again, it has huge sonic spectrum. Uh, I remember that uh, Daft Punk used to do a lot of sound design for their albums with it. Um, so it's, uh, if you just go through the presets, you could say that it's, it's really abstract, but uh, you know, we all know Daft Punk was really dance oriented and really uh, punchy uh, and um, just interesting. So, um, yeah, I guess you can do everything with Absinthe as well if you get your head around it and it, you feel at home um, just the way it's uh, laid out and it's the way you set up a, a, um, a, a signal flow. But it's it, le it really leads to uh, experimentation because it's just a completely different thing and it also has an audio input so you can also use it as a real-time effect for audio sources. So, yeah, I would say it's the most complex of the three, even. Yeah, there definitely are pages upon pages of uh, parameters to get to tweak in, for sure. Um, I actually have, unfortunately, I haven't had too much time with Absinthe um, because I spent all my money on Massive and FM8 back in the day. Uh, but that really is kind of the holy trinity right there. Those three synths. I mean, it was ubiquitous. Every every producer who I you know collabed with or went to a studio, those were the synths that were always a part of the project. So I mean, it just speaks to Native Instruments brand. It speaks to Native Instruments um, kind of intuition about what what we need as music producers, and they just continually deliver. Um, and I'm excited to talk about the future classics in a second, but we actually have a video clip that you made using Replica. So, Joel, why don't you go ahead and run that, and uh, we'll come back. But before you do that, Joel, just one second. I, I do that to you all the time. I'm so sorry, Joel. Uh, we're going to do another giveaway. Um, let us know in the chat which synth you're most excited to get your hands on, Massive, Absinthe, or FM8. Uh, let us know in the chat. 
and just spam it a couple of times. Don't go too crazy because we do want to see the questions that people put for Marcel in the chat. So <laughs> uh, keep your questions coming as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and play this video about Replica and come back and chat about it. Hi, Marcel here from Native Instruments. In this video, I will give you a quick overview of a Replica XT, a really flexible and creative multi-mode delay. First of all, there are five different styles. These represent different modes or engines and will sound very different from each other. In the center, you find the typical main delay controls like mix, rate and feedback. Also, there are some additional controls which we'll go into later. In the top center, there's the main visualizer of the delay, can be really helpful to see what's going on. And on the right side, there are some post-delay modulation effects for additional processing of the signal. And finally, on the bottom, you can find the single and dual modes, and you can switch between standard and ping pong stereo mode. So let's give it a go. So I got the speed going and just bringing up the mix a bit. Then we have a filter with a low and high cut that we can set. In the modern mode, we have a saturation that we can bring in a bit. And then there's the depth and rate of the pitch modulation. Now I switch to the tape mode, which sounds a bit more lo-fi compared to the modern one. And let's adjust the delay rate to see what grooves we can come up with. As you can hear, the tape mode gives you these nice pitch shifting effects that we all love from tape style delays. And with a really short delay rate of just a few milliseconds, we can get these nice metallic sounding delay effects. The nice thing about the feedback is that it goes over 100%, so you can get it to self-oscillate and make some really interesting sound effects. So now I switch to the diffusion mode. Let's hear how that sounds. The more I increase the amount and size, the more it's starting to sound like a reverb. So now let's see what the additional controls in the center can do. the shuffle and feel, you can shift around the rhythmical groove of the delay. And with accent, you can adjust the emphasis of the groove from on to offbeat. The panning lets you modify the stereo panorama. And in the ducking section, you can find some parameters for dynamics. It works like a sidechain compressor, so the dry signal can duck the wet signal. Now let's take a look at the effects. We have some typical time-based modulation effects like a phaser, or a flanger,
and the chorus. Then we have some more special effects like a frequency shifter. There's a filter which has an LFO. And there's also a pitch shifter which can lead to really interesting results. All right, so that's a, a good look at Replica, though it's, I believe, Replica XT, which is not the version in the uh, Complete Classics Collection bundle, correct? Exactly, so there's the regular version called Replica, and the video was on Replica XT. Um, the basic workflow is the same, but um, the, the base version just has a few less of the modes, a few less uh, effects, um, but the basic, the basic sound is still there. But I can still recommend the upgrade because, uh, yeah, it's, it's my go-to delay since I, since I started using it because it, it's all the delays you want and need in one, basically. So. Yeah, I mean, the video you made, as I was telling you off stream, was was a really good video demonstration of what it's capable of. And it really does have, it's like, what, like three or four reverb or three or four delays in one, mm. which is which is pretty impressive. Yeah, and if you've got them all together, why would you need uh, another reverb? I mean, delay, sorry, I keep saying reverb. But you can pretty much make a reverb inside of it too, right? Yeah, there's this diffusion mode. And that's kind of, it's hard to describe. It sits in between a delay and a reverb. Um, I don't know what's happening in the back end, but to me, it sounds like that the delay slices are sliced so finely that at some point they kind of turn into this mush of, of almost reverb sounding um, delay. So yeah, it, well, uh, it's definitely good for experimentation. It, it was a, it was a great video, and I want my hands on Replica XT, so I'm gonna go ahead and send you an email later so you can get me a copy, okay? Because I can't, go. I, I am, I am outside of the uh, the realm of being able to win a complete classics collection, which I'm gonna do another giveaway. Um, what should we have people say in the chat, Marcel? Um, Let's just have them type in native instruments to be able to win a copy of the classics collection. The entire bundle. We're talking about Massive, Absinthe 5. We're talking about FMA and Replica. Your chance to win. And if you don't win, you got to take advantage of the bundle because it's 99 bucks for all of it. Trust me, you want to take advantage. Um, I got a few questions. And while people are typing in native instruments in the chat for a possible chance to win the bundle... Um, let me just, I'm going to rattle these off to you. Let me know what you think. Um, are there any plans to release a new version of Absinthe uh, version 6, for example? And I know, listen, Marcel, every stream we do with a dev, 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 a dev I can't say a developer. Uh, everybody always asks for the the scoop, the and information. There's the next that, coming out. Yeah. What a, what's the new synth coming that you haven't announced yet? Uh, so we could just gloss over that. I mean, unless you want to field it in any sort of capacity. Is there a version 6 coming? Not that I know of. Okay. So version 5 is still the one. Okay. So another question here is, what plugins do you like outside of the native instruments uh, range? And I understand if you can't answer that question as well. What do I like personally? Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, there's so much coming out these days, uh, it feels like. So um, f 
for me, even par being part of the industry, it's hard to catch up. What's what's going on? I feel um, what 100%. I'm what I'm using myself um, a lot. Um, I mean, of course, uh, Isotope is uh, one of the favorites for um, everything that's that needs to be more um, specific and uh, detailed. Um, and just, I, just they just joined the Native Instruments family, didn't they? Uh, I mean, they they have been. Um, they are also an investor who invested into Native also invested into them. So we're kind of part of the same family. Nice. Um, so to speak and i mean that's also just an exciting in general because we kind of now uh, how do you call it sister companies so um we getting more and more in touch with them and also figuring out ways of collaborating on uh, maybe even on future products together so oh that um, is exciting we're huge fans of uh isotope uh, the plug and boutique team here oh yeah huge fans and what I also like is FabFilter. Um, just yeah. it's a different way of um, doing stuff, um, especially the the user interfaces just look different than what you used to be, uh, what you used to. Um, but the sound is really precise and on point. So um, I really like the technical aspects of it. Um, yeah, huge so, fans yeah. of them as well. Huge fans. Who isn't? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they make great stuff. Um, yeah, if you're not. You might be doing something wrong, I think. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, to, uh, to each his own, right? <laughs> um, when will uh, we see aftertouch support and filter keyboard tracking on Machina? Aftertouch support and what was the second one? Filter tracking. Filter keyboard tracking. I don't know what that means. Keyboard Maybe tracking. you do. Um, I'm wondering what filter keyboard tracking would mean in this uh, sense. Like, is the question around a keyboard that you would connect to machine? Potentially. Um, I mean, I can't tell you now. Uh, um, aftertouch or polyphonic aftertouch and um, MPE and these kind of things that are floating around um, are definitely technologies um, we're looking into. Um, on the other hand, uh, it's not you can just flip a switch and um, make everything um, polyphonic aftertouch or MPE compatible. So um, when and how we will implement this uh, and is, if this is will, this will be part of machine, I can't tell you now. Um, but the more often we hear this question, the more likely it is that we will look into it deeper. That's, so it's just uh, uh, it just gave me a, a thought. Is there a place where people can go where you're always monitoring feedback? I know you said you probably do like, um, you know, your email blast with surveys and stuff. But there is there like a, a Discord or a place where you're just constantly monitoring what people are talking about? I mean, we have the NI forum. Uh, I don't know forum forums are maybe something from from olden times, but it's still. <laughs> um, it's still kind of the one platform that we also monitor closely and also communicate communi communicate actively on mm. uh, in terms of roadmap and and strategy. So um, I I would say for now the forum is still um, the best place to get in touch and also follow um, what's going on. You mentioned Discord. That's actually um, something we are looking into at the at the moment. Um, I got uh, I got invited to a kind of a working group, and we're looking into together with the community team, looking into potentially opening up uh, Discord specifically for for NI um, stuff. So, if that's something that the people want um, to get in touch, I mean, I personally have been using Discord like twice, and I got a bit overwhelmed. Like this is kind of a new way of of social media in the end. And yeah. also communicating. It's kind of in between a forum and social media. So um, I still need to to learn how this all works. But um, yeah, if this is something that people want to um, use to get in touch with us, um, feel free to to uh, to reach out and uh, keep commenting. <laughs> so maybe we'll have a Discord soon as well. Uh, another question here is: Will there be M one? Apple Silicon support soon. Native in native support for M1 Apple Silicon. 
I mean, this whole compatibility topic is a big one. And uh, of course, in the past, Apple and uh, yeah, mostly Apple doesn't didn't make it easy for us to follow up um, because they've just been releasing OSs and, and new um, new yeah systems um, uh, in the past really uh, with a really high frequency. But of course, this is always the uh, the most important thing that our stuff is compatible with the newest technology out there. So um, we're definitely in the loop uh, and also in contact with Apple every now and then. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the question, will our our um, will our products be M1 compatible in the future? I would say yes. I can't give you an exact date, but um, yeah, soon enough. Nice. Okay. And one last one before we move on to the Future Classics bundle. Someone's wondering if what you might recommend for their first native instruments instrument. That's hard to answer because I would um, ask back, what do you want to do? Like, what what genre are you looking for to produce? Um, what uh, what what's your experience? What's your background? What sonic spectrum are you looking for? Um, but without knowing all these things, I would still um, pitch Massive again because um, I think, as you said as well, it's a nice synthesizer to learn how, how synthesis works. And everything you learn with Massive, you can apply to other things then as well. So I think Massive in general is, the, is a great um, getting started and learning tool with synthesis. On the other hand, is if synthesis is nothing for you, then of course you need to look into Contact because uh, Contact yes. is our sampler, which is it's a sample-based platforms, and we have yeah uh, so many different instruments which are based on Contact, uh, which can lead from a classical band like a guitar player to also uh, like Ashlight that we just released, like a really crazy cinematic sound design tool. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're not into synthesis, maybe look into contact. If you like synthesis, I think Massive is a good way to start. I so. think the Classics Bundle is the best place for you to start because then you're going to get all three of those synths, as we've been talking about. You want all three of them. And if you're just getting into synthesis, you might find that maybe FM synthesis fits you better like it mm. might be the case that that's that style of creating sound is the one for you and i mean if you're just going to get one i believe they're all more than 99 dollars if you buy them alone yep. so it makes sense just to buy the classics bundle get all three for a, a lower price than you'd spend for just to buy one um but of course to each his own as you said let's keep the ball moving here um and talk about the complete future classics bundle or future classics collection um and i've also been authorized to give a few copies of this away too so let's do that giveaway now let's do one giveaway type in complete all caps future classics collection for your chance to win a copy of super eight form track one it's pronounced track one right not trko one like it was track one okay and then the mod yeah, yeah. And then Mod Pack, which is a collection of three time based effects choral, flare, and phases. Um, I love the name of that collection because we, we got the classics, which are really classics. And now we've got the future classics. It's just such a good name. I don't know who, who thought of it, who came up with it, but cheers to them because it's a I solid name. I will, I will pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's just run down these. Uh, I've had hands on a little bit with form. I did some videos with track one. Uh, I haven't had too much of a play. I did have a, a quick play with Super 8. Can you tell us a little bit about Super 8, where it's coming from and how it's different from the classics collection? Sure. So Super 8 um, is an eight voice polyphonic analog virtual virtual analog synthesizer i would uh, describe it and it's kind of uh, a, a nod to the the big era of analog polysynths so cs80 um profit um, you name it so like all the big uh big keys uh, things with lots of knobs 
but uh, just a really good bass sound. And um, for everyone who's looking into like these uh, nice, warm and analog, I keep calling this analog. Of course, it's not analog, it's virtual analog. But what is analog? It's kind of imperfections, right? It's, uh, it's uh, kind of imperfections in the pitch, maybe some uh, saturation and just all these things that make a, a boring sound interesting. Um, and just looking at uh, pure waveforms, uh, even the sign can sound interesting if you have the right oscillator and the right signal flow. And Super 8 is kind of a nod to this yeah, big golden era of, of polyphonic synthesizers. And um, yeah, if you like the Blade Runner soundtrack, uh, I like to get these really nice uh, goosebump pads that sound retrospective but also futuristic at the same time this is the way to go um and what what's really special about super 8 is um again the modulations because everything can kind of uh, be modulated and this starts this movement really brings a sound alive and um it really has a specific distinct character um, and it's also really playable because you can um, map, uh, for example, aftertouch or the mod wheel and all those um, performative um, things of performative features of a keyboard to the th to the single um, parameters. And this can really bring the sound alive if you're a player type of guy who really wants to move his fingers around and uh, really play. Um, um, ex ex expressively, or if you want to automate stuff, because um, with the modulation matrix and also modulating, um, this these sounds really get uh, become alive, and yeah, it's it's meant to be played like a synthesizer, like a real instrument. How many oscillators does it have? So it has two oscillator sections, but each of the oscillators have uh, different waveforms you can mix. So maybe if you um, <clears throat> are familiar with the, the mini brute or micro brute, they have a similar oscillator. So it's one oscillator, but it has different waveforms that you can mix with a kind of volume faders. And depending on the um, yeah, mix of those single waveforms, you get a, a really wide sonic spectrum for each of the oscillators. There's also a, a sub in noise oscillator too, right? If I remember correctly. Um, yes, so you can also use it as sub or noise. Um, uh, to, oh, I believe to there's a, like an actual sub, uh, dedicated sub or noise oscillator on top of the other two. I might be going crazy, but I think no, I, I think that. it's it's for each of the oscillator sections. Um, each of them has a uh, sub oscillator or noise that you can mix in together with the other waveforms. Okay. So it's, um, it's basically someone, super okay. easy to control. Like it's uh, w one of the easiest synthesizers to to play with or to use, but still um, the sonic spectrum's really big because you can have these all these modulations going, and you can also do some basic FM and stuff. So yeah. Someone's wondering what you would recommend for someone trying to produce lo-fi hip hop or chill hop type genres. Super 8, uh, while well, we're talking about it, I think it's uh, for this whole lo-fi um, sound. Again, this whole lo-fi trend um, is exactly making use of this character I was just explaining, like modulating slight imperfections, imperfections um, some background yeah, noise, sure. modulating the pitch, modulating everything, basically. Um, so Super 8 is, I think, a super great um, synthesizer to start with. And on the other hand, we released um, for the Contact Play series line some uh, instruments uh, like uh, Cloud Supply was one of the ones. Um, if you're not familiar, like we released a series of instruments which are based on Contact, which are called Play Series. And Play Series because they are um, easy to play. It's a super um, nice interface, just uh, eight eight main knobs which you can uh, move around and you have everything under your fingertips without really getting into synthesis or anything. Um, so Cloud Supply was one of the ones that's specifically aimed for 
um, this type of genre that was mentioned. There's also one or two different ones, uh, like look to the play series. Um, you'll definitely find some nice uh, Sonics in there. Nice. All right, let's keep moving here. Let's talk about track one. This is a beast of a synth. I know that it's dedicated to percussion and bass, but I mean, even if you just flip through some of the incredible presets in there, you'll hear things that sound like synth leads. I mean, it really is so much more than just, uh, you know, drums and bass. Can you tell us a little bit about track one? Sure. I mean, um, the basic concept was to address something that a lot of people are struggling with to get kind of a good uh, fundament, uh, fundament in the like fundamental base of the track, like the the kick, uh, like all the low frequencies, space, kick, and how these interact with each, with each other. Um, and that was the basic idea to uh, for track one to kind of attack this low frequency mixing problem as well. Um, because, uh, and in the end it's, it's two instruments in one, it's a kick drum instrument and also a bass instrument. And you have a sequencer for each of them. And, uh, the one can kind of duck or compress the other. So you have this problem that a lot of, um, especially hobbyist producers or maybe not that, uh, don't have this big, uh, long experience with mixing. Um, there's kind of a uh, predefined um, mixing in progress that makes sure that uh, the bass and the kick drum ha have e each their own distinct um, place in the so in the frequency spectrum, but also in terms of dynamics. Um, so that was kind of a more of a technical pitch, but in the end, it's a it's two instruments in one uh, with a built-in sequencer and. Um, you can basically make a full track with it. People making a full-blown techno track with it and really performing it live uh, just with this tool. And I'm I was blown away by what you can do with it. As you said, it's not only uh, capable of doing kick and bass. You can load in samples, so you can also use it for other sounds than a kick drum. And uh, if you pitch a bass a few octaves higher, it's not a bass anymore. It's, it becomes a lead synth. So um, you can go really crazy and do some uh, really uh, 303 acid bass lines with it as well. Uh, and or just do crazy, crazy, crazy effects with it. So um, it's really just an interesting take on um, how you can make a simple to use tool that has a lot of effect. Yeah, I would I would encourage anyone who gets their hands on it just to get like a top, a percussion top loop. Uh, there's like hip hop, there's techno and electro. So get the right genre style top loop and just flip through some of the presets that it ships with because it's going to blow your mind. It, they just they sound so good, <laughs> especially if you've got some good earbuds, headphones or monitors. They just sound so good. They they hit. They hit in the chest, and I mean, obviously, that's what they're going for in most cases. But it's it's just really, really cool, and it's also cool to see, um, you know, because you got something like a massive, where it's 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 really anything is possible. One's much more focused on the low end, which is a very important part of most modern music, um, and it's focused there. And they've done a great job at absolutely shine, as you said. Um, for whether or not you're a hobbyist or a professional, it's definitely got something for everybody. And the low end uh, is important, and track one has definitely got the low end. I've got some more uh, questions coming in here. One is, what was your first job, and what has your career path been to this point where you're at now? So maybe they're looking for kind of, you know, if you went to university or did you have a job before you were a product specialist? Because you already said you started at a, as a product specialist at Native Instruments and now you're UX and research. So what were you doing before Native Instruments? So before I was doing full time uh, sound design and uh, composing work uh, for multimedia and film industry. Um, that was yeah i guess my my upbringing and i'm still doing that on the side so i still consider myself as a as a user uh, and also mentioned i have a, a bunch of projects i'm working on as a producer and dj um so um 
And actually, my my uh, first contact with Native was that they featured me as an artist for the Stems campaign with uh, that we released with Tractor. And um, through that, I kind of uh, got to uh, produce some sa- some presets and some samples for the expansions. And um, um, so I kind of um, yeah made my way into the company uh, um, as an artist, more or less. Um, but yeah, before I was doing uh, full time um, sound design and compositional work uh, on commission on commission. Nice. Well, that's actually another question that just got sent in is if you are a producer who's published music under what name and where can people find it? Is it available on Spotify or anything like that? What should people be searching for? I'm not a big fan of Spotify um, because I'm part of the uh, of the underground, I would say. So Bandcamp all the way. But anyway, um, my artist name is Night Drips without eyes. So N-G-H-T. DRPS, if you want to look into some uh, sub bass movements. Nice. And yeah, you can find me on Bandcamp, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, there's also another project I have with uh, Bukas Finest called Two Rangers. Um, but yeah, look for Night Drips and maybe you Night, find something. What, what, to kind like. of music, what kind of music can people expect from Night Drips? Bass music. <laughs> I think so. If you look everything with bass, so <laughs> my biggest influence is all the UK genres that came came from there, from jungle, garage, two step, uh, dubstep, grime, drill, you name it. Um, so everything with a good bass. No, well, I mean, I'm into that type of music, so I'll have to check it out after the stream here. Um, let's jump into the final uh, plugins inside of the complete Future Classics bundle, but. Let's give away another bundle. If you want your chance to win a complete Future Classics collection, which is $99 exclusively on PluginBoutique.com, definitely go over there and check it out. But maybe you could win right now by typing in Super 8 or Track 1. Which which would you rather have your hands on right now if you could have your hands on them? And while that's happening, make sure to keep your questions for Marcel coming in. We'll get those answered. But let's check. let's talk about form. But actually, before we talk about form, You've actually sent a really great video for us to watch. So, Joel, if that's queued up, go ahead and play that. We'll come back and talk about form from Native Instruments. Hi, Marcel here from Native Instruments. In this video, I will give you an overview and a bit of a sound design workflow with form, a quite versatile and interesting sample-based synthesizer. Let's begin importing a sample. You can just drag and drop it, preview, and load the sample. Now we can hear the pitch tracking of the sample. Since the original was kind of a sound effect, it becomes this strange abstract texture. What I can do now is to adjust the sample playback speed. This leads to some interesting time stretching. Here we can find some different curve presets. These represent different ways of playing back the sample. You can also make your own curves in the curve editor. In the oscillator section, you can flatten the pitch. This gives an even pitch and you can adjust the formance independently from the pitch. Now we're getting into the oscillator effects. These are some unique controls with which you can shape, multiply, deform, FM and stereo modify the sample. Now I'm mixing in the additive oscillator to support the tonal qualities of the main sound.
Now I'm adjusting the glide to get some portamento between the notes. I think I like where this is going. Let me adjust the sub oscillator. I feel that's a good starting point for a nice bass. So let's add some effects. This is the frequency shaping section. Here you have two frequency bands, which you can adjust independently. Let's give it some saturation. The dynamic section is a compressor to kind of tame the amplitude a bit. And then we have a delay and a reverb. I will just go with the reverb for now. Here you can find different modes, each with its own character. In the voicing section, you can add more voices, set them to unison, and also spread the voices. This makes the sound really wide and rich. To make the sound more alive, we're gonna introduce some modulation now. Every parameter has this modulation section, with three modulation sources. For this frequency band, I'm gonna choose LFO1 and increase the depth into the negative. And on the main page, I can adjust the parameters of the modulation sources. So here we have a really interesting bass sound made from a completely different sample. To me it's always amazing how far you can take a sound and explore the sonic possibilities with a sound design tool like Form. So, yeah, um, we'll need to finish our conversation about Biley Funk because I have a lot to say about it. But, uh, but let's sure. keep on track here for the stream and talk about Form and more specifically the video. I mean, you made that video and by the end of it, you have almost forget that it would sound like the sound source you started with and where you end up with, mm. which seems like the idea form is like really all about. But I mean, the end bass patch that you have there is, is massive. And I can see uh, your bass music influence in that tutorial now that we've talked about it. But I mean, wow. Can you tell us a little bit more about form? Maybe... Um, how you came up with the idea to take that original sample and make it into this big gnarly bass and like why it's possible with something like this this instrument? Well, the idea was really spontaneous actually. I didn't plan anything. So I just picked a random sound effect from my hard drive and just dragged and dropped it and started tweaking without, without a plan. Um, was kind of more an explorative kind of way to do it. But um, yeah, with form, I feel that's for me, it's made to experiment and just to come up with new things on the go. And 
one click inspires the next. And uh, um, yeah, as you said, that's kind of part of the the fun for me to to take something and bring it to a completely different place without even knowing where I will take it before. And, I think uh, yeah, I think that is such an important part of music production these days. Because even if you take something like, um, and I say this all the time, but if you take something like a peak hour EDM, right? The melody is usually pretty simple. It's four to the floor, so that's simple. What makes it big is the sound design. Like making yep. that unique lead sound is what makes those tracks so good. And you know, you hear people like, ah, it's so easy to make. No, it's not. It's they probably spent hours, if not days, on that one lead synth sound, and that's what sells the track in the end of the day. And you know, when I was watching your your video that you made with Form, and I've had, a, like I said, I had to play with it. It really felt like fun sound design, like you were saying, like one click informs the next click, and by the end of it, you've you've made a journey. And at the end, it sounds fantastic. You have no idea where you started, but really the end the end goal or the end product is what's important. And it just I think it really uh, of the collection of synths that we've talked about here, I'd say this one's definitely kind of more like the experimental one, like you were saying, like just jump in. Don't really have maybe a goal, maybe have a goal, but just jump in and just start tweaking out and you'll be happily surprised more often than not, I would say. Yeah, I think, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. You could also load in a sample that has a nice pitch, like a tonality or even a melody in there. And then form will track this melody, this pitch and you can um, kind of modify it and, and really not take it to uh, like a, the, such an abstract extreme way that I, way I did. But for me... Um, Maybe that's kind of just my philosophy when I when I try to sound do sound design. I try to come up with something that I don't expect. I try to surprise myself. I try to go into this serendipity moment where something happens which triggers an idea and that leads to the next idea and you get into this feedback loop, just triggering new ideas all the time. And um, also I feel like through experimentation, you just learn new things um, you will never forget. Like these uh, pop-up moments that you have, uh, where suddenly everything makes sense, and the a half an hour before was just noise, but yeah. suddenly it's music. Um, you will never forget these moments, and uh, I think form for me really opened up uh, a way to again look differently at samples because usually the way you use samples is you drag and drop it, and then you put some effects on it, and you try to modify it and make it sound different. Uh, I mean, the first years I was making music, I even considered using samples as cheating. So I tried not to use any samples and tried to do everything my own. But form really opened up um, just a different way of thinking about samples because you can zoom in and just make something completely different out of uh, one little, little millisecond if you stretch it out. Like uh, it's really playing with with time and with sonics and with uh, with a tool like form, it really, as you said, like it it uh, it invites to be playful and to be experimental and explorative and um, yeah, just play around with it until and it sounds good. And, and and the key here is you're gonna generate a a truly unique sound after you've gone down the rabbit hole. That's the thing. When nobody up, can yeah. nobody can like recreate that sound because. It sounds familiar, like it sounds like, a, in this example, it sounds like a bass, but still there's some character, some texture on in there that exactly. you maybe never heard before and you can't like replicate with any other tool. So, yeah. And someone's Everybody gonna wants listen to, to that. Unique. Yeah, and someone's gonna listen to that. If you played that bass in a track, for example, I hope you can't hear the guy sweeping the, the hallway out here, but um, if if you played that bass and they're like, oh my God, that's so rich and full and and full of life and character. How did he do that? They would never think to take. I think it was a just like change, right? Like on a on a like just on a table or something. Yeah. No one would ever think. Oh, I need to take a sample, a short sample of change hitting the table and throw it in. And no one would ever think that. And that's that will be your sound forever. Like no one's going to be able to reproduce that because of the unique approach you took to getting it. 
it's just uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And also, you'll know at the end of the day if if it as goes off to be a platinum hit, you'll be like, yeah, I made that base out of that. And then you could make the tutorial and be famous off the tutorial too. <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you um, just mentioned it, especially with like electronic music, it's all about the character of the sounds because, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of the it's not about the melody; it's about how the sounds um, like speak for themselves. And usually you do this by layering, like you have a, a synthesizer and you layer some samples or some acoustic textures, uh, found sounds, whatever, onto it and try to put make it into one. But that's where form is like really strong. It makes something out of a source sample and it synthesizes from it. So, yeah, it's it's just a new way to to work with sounds in the end. Yeah. Uh, another thing I would encourage people to do that are watching is don't always open up your DAW and pull up something like Form or Massive and say, I'm going to write a tune today. Uh, open up Massive or Form and just be like, I'm just going to design sounds today. I'm just going to be tweaking. I'm just going to go on a journey. Don't always be like, I need to make my next release uh, because the things you're going to learn along the way, if like you take an eight-hour day and just design new sounds, could be just bass sounds, it could be just pad sounds, whatever you want to do. Um, not only will you have those if you bounce them to audio um, for later use, but you'll also figure out what one thing does. And when you need that later on, when you're doing something specific for a project, like, oh, yeah, I need to jump in and do this with this parameter. Mm. Like, it's just... I think a I lot of really, people I, don't do that. I think more pe people need to just have sound design days rather than making the next banger. I can really identi identify with what you're saying. Um, it really depends on, on the personality because people tend to be um, impatient and they want results quickly and they, wanna, they want the track that they have in mind, right? Um, but I feel it's really good... Um, way to just free yourself from this pressure to f making a track or finishing a track and just as you said like dedicate this time just to explore and make some sounds and um, I mean I have another friend called Kabuki he always does it like that he has one day where he specifically works on the sounds and then on another day couldn't wouldn't be even the next day on another day he has those sounds and then he starts making music with it and I'm not that uh, organized sometimes say <laughs> just stop making music and work on a sound for two hours and then I get back to making music and maybe that's not the the best way to do it. But um, yeah, I feel every minute you spend working or exploring something, uh, this takes some time, but in the end you will save time because it's all in your memory. It's all in your muscle memory at some, exactly. some point. You just know... 100%. If you have a sound in your head, ah, I did this experimentation one year ago, maybe I do this. And then you get quicker um, coming up with new results. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, if if I were, if I were taking a, a sound design day, for example, and all of a sudden I had a sound that immediately spoke to some sort of rhythm or pattern or melody, I would run with it. I wouldn't say, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm only doing sound design today, but I mean, I think just setting out as a goal when you're opening up your DAW just to make some sounds, I think is a good, without even maybe a genre in mind, just just make some sounds. I think it's a it's a good idea. So all you uh, young producers listening, try it out. Try it out. Uh, we've got a few more things to talk about. We've already gone over an hour today. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're hungry to get back in. You're back fresh from vacation and you just want to do work, work, work. So I won't take up too much more of your time here. We do have the mod pack to talk about now, which is actually a set of three effects. There's Coral, Flare, and Phasis. Phasis, am I saying it right? Yep. I'm always... Yeah, okay. Uh, can you just run us uh, kind of quickly through them? They're pretty standard effects, but they, they look phenomenal and they sound great too. So if you just want to fill us in on what those three effects are. Sure. I mean, the name always kind of uh, suggests what they are. So choral is a chorus, flare is a flanger, and phases is a phaser. And as you mentioned, um, these are typical modulation effects, time-based modulation effects that you know. Um, but what really sets them apart is um, their user interface because it's really playful and uh, it's simple, but it's really um, 
detailed and really helping you to understand what's happening because we have those little um yeah around the parameters around the knobs we have kind of uh, graphics that kind of help you understand what's happening in, in the from a technical perspective without being technical i think that's that's always the the balance you need to to do to uh, to suggest some technical things without being too overly technical and still kind of playful and i think our designers did a really great job in kind of incorporating that um at the same time, each of those effects have some have more than one mode. So you think, oh, it's just a chorus and you can just get uh, some voices and then some delay and feedback and that's it. But um, just within the choral, there's, I think, four different sub modes that sound completely different from each other. And uh, same for the flanger, same for the phaser. Um, some of them just have an extra mode, an extra button somewhere that... Um, flips something in the back end and really um, makes it sound more extreme, more different, uh, switches into a different mode. So the effects, uh, all of them are a bit more than you would expect. Just the basic sound sounds really, uh, yeah, immersive and and rich and strong. Um, sometimes I have the problem when I look for a modulation effect that, it, that it's not doing enough. Like I'm looking for a phaser, I'm going through some from some random um, plugins and all of them sound like a phaser, but none of them does this magic like you would expect from, from a phaser or like what you have in mind, what a phaser could sound like in your head. And all of these, you can really bring them to this threshold, this tipping point where they start going, get, getting really extreme. Uh, sometimes even overly extreme, but that's always nice to know where this point is because maybe a few degrees back, that's the perfect point. And the extreme, uh, the extremes can always lead to some interesting sound design. So what I sometimes do is just throw a random sample in there, throw a bunch of those modulation effects and just tweak them to the extreme and just see what's coming out. Um, again, the exploration part and um, sometimes you can't even tell that there's a phaser going on because the results just crazy, uh, crazy sound design. And then you can like use the, uh, just the audio of it. Um, but again, just the basic sound of, of those effects, uh, sounds really good, which is again, the same for massive or for super eight that the simple sounds also sound really nice. And, uh, it does what you would expect it to do, uh, not just adding something but it really changes the character and um yeah that's what's what i'm looking for when i when i look for uh for um an effect that really does something creative and not just adds a little modulation there so that the pitch is changing now but it really it adds some character some some new quality to the sound and yeah i think that's what uh, those three modulation effects and also a freak i think what we're giving away uh, one of the saturation effects that really can do that. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a, a good point. That is on my list of things to talk about. Uh, for the entire month, uh, if you make any purchase of anything on PluginBoutique.com, you get Freak from Native Instruments for free. Um, so if you just want to kind of briefly mention what Freak is and what it does, I think that'd be very helpful for people who uh, who might be interested in getting it. Nice. Freak is also one of my favorites. What is it? What is what is exactly? What does it do? Um, Freak is kind of um, uh, a saturation, I would say. Um, but it's uh, no, it's not a saturation. Sorry, um, that's uh, yeah. It's hard to describe. It's frequency shifting, ring modulation, modulation stuff i can't even i don't even know what's the technical term i guess frequency it's a shifting freak. Is the right it's a freak freak so it's frequency freak. <laughs> yeah, it's freak. yeah it's frequency shifting ring modulation but um you can take it even further than that so it it really it completely changes the sound you throw into it and if you start working with the parameters you can um really make it uh, yeah completely different completely abstract um 
I, I did had some great exp um, like results just throwing it on a drum bus, for example, and um, working up to uh, to a drop instead of kind of doing the the classic snare, 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 even more snares in a riser, <laughs> um, like what <laughs> the EDM <laughs> is doing. <laughs> a lot of snares in a riser and then the drop, you can just throw this on somewhere and st just start automating the parameters and it will more and more, um, yeah, kind of rip apart the, the sound, what, what you're feeding through it and make it like really edgy, digital, um, yeah, you know what a ring modulator sounds like? It sounds otherworldly, right? right. It, it changes the pitch and also the frequencies and the, it's it's starting to saturate. So um, it's a really nice effect to, for electronic music and also for sound design in general. So highly recommended. Yeah, and it's free uh, with any purchase. I mean, even if you make like a, a $2, $5 purchase, you get it for free. So... Uh, now is the time. Like I said a couple of times throughout the stream, when Native Instruments partnered with us, they came in, they came in with the, with guns ablazing with deals and nothing but uh, we accepted with open arms. So thank you to Native Instruments and thank you for coming on the show today. Um, I've got a few more questions here. I do want to do one more giveaway of the Future Classics bundle. So uh, let me know in the chat which one of the three effects you need in your collection, whether it be Coral, Flare, or Phasus. And uh, let me just ask a few more of these questions to you, Marcel, if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. How many people are on the development team at Native Instruments? So we have more than one development team, uh, first of <laughs> all. Um, <laughs> because, again, we have complete tractor machine and we have effects and synthesizers and com uh, contact. So... Uh, yeah, how many people are working in the development? A few hundred, I would say. Maybe wow. 100, maybe 200. Yeah, I mean, worldwide, we have 500 employees or something. So, yeah, it's it's a lot. Cool. Um, do you have any sound design inspirations? I guess they're asking maybe if there's a particular producer who really does excel at sound design that you look up to or respect in any way? Um, really good question. Let me think. So one of the producers that really blew my mind uh, recently was, is Igloo Ghost. Um, maybe you heard of him. Uh, he's a young guy doing some really, really crazy sounds. Um, so it's called, it's spelled I-G-L-O-O uh, and then Ghost, G-H-O-S-T, Igloo Ghost. He's nice. I mean, I think, you know, Skrillex <laughs> is, he really is one of the, the, the best at just taking um, some really strange sounds and making them wonderful, I think. Like that, that track he did with the Justin Bieber, where it's just like, if you played that sound, I think most people would be like, oh, no, they just flip right through it. But he took it and made it into a melody that was pretty, pretty sweet. So I recommend Skrillex. Um, Noisia, Noisia, Noisia. I always, I don't know how to Noisia. pronounce. Noisia. Yeah. yeah, they're just on their farewell tour now. Yeah, definitely check them out too. Uh, for people who are really pushing the limits of what's possible with sound design. Um, what DAW are you? Uh, do you use or prefer? So. I started using Cubase SX2 back in the day, and I've been using Logic and Ableton as well, but I always went back to Cubase. Also because of my film composer background, it's just um, one of the best DAWs for audio pro post-processing and working for film. So that's why I'm still on Cubase. I probably use 20% of what it can do, but um, I love it. Yeah. So Cubase, Cubase all the way. Um, I, I'm Ableton all the way, Ableton Live all the way. I started yeah, on every, Fruity Loops. Every time I <laughs> use Ableton, I start screaming. There's no scissor tool and everything is so tiny and every plugin looks the same. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can understand why people use it, but it's it's too small for me. Well, they're in Germany, man. You got to don't, don't. Uh, Cubase is also well. in Germany, so hey, hey. Oh, 
Um, one last question here. What computer languages are used mainly in the programming of native instruments plugins? If I'm, you've got such a wide range, if there are one or one or two that people should be checking out if they're interested in pursuing a career in product development. Yeah, I mean, we always need, need people who, who can program. Uh, I think C++ is still one of the main, main yeah, the fundamentals uh, there. Yeah. Um, always check our uh, open uh, job positions on, on the website if you're interested and apply. But definitely learn C++ first. If you if want to program, <laughs> it's, it's, it can help, but it's not mandatory. I mean, I guess you, we you'll teach to... on site. So Sorry? I could go over. You, you can you teach it on site so someone could go there with no experience. With no experience imagine. whatsoever. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm gonna do one more massive giveaway. I'm gonna give one person both bundles. Now to be uh, to be entered into win this future classics bundle and the classics collection bundle, you need to say thank you, Marcel, for joining us today. Um, put it in the chat, hit the like button as usual, and we're gonna pick one person to win both bundles. It's pretty massive. That's a pretty big deal, I think. Um, but yes, Marcel, thank you very much for taking the time today. We went way over time, um, but I'm happy you stuck with us and we had a great conversation about all of these wonderful plugins from Native Instruments. Uh, and, you know, on behalf of the entire Plugin Boutique team, we're super excited to be in this partnership with you and um, we're really looking forward to a bright future. And of course, uh, if, you've, if you have anything else in the future that comes along and you want to pop on, and do another podcast uh, where doors are open for you, my friend. Just let me know, and we can set it up. Oh, I'm I was I'm happy I was part of this. It was really fun talking to you, and I'm I'm happy to be back anytime. Perfect. So I uh, I'm just gonna let the uh, people spam the the chat for one more second. Spam the chat. Say thank you, Marcel, and then put some fire emojis in there for Marcel as well. I love the fire emojis. My favorite emoji. Um, hey, possible. more fire, more fire. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Um, if Nick, if you want to send me the list of winners and what they've won, I will announce those and we will wrap up. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten lunch yet. It is now 2.30. Dinner time for me. Yeah, what time is it over there? Are you looking at 7 o'clock right now? 7.30? Yep, 7.30. In the evening, oh, sun, you're getting is, that. sun is going down. Nice blue. It's a nice blue hue over over your shoulder yep. there out the window. Uh, at least you get overtime. Hey, hey, do you, do you get to, you get to go in a couple extra or a couple hours late tomorrow to make up for the time that you spent? I, w I wish. <laughs> I'll talk to I'll talk to Dietrich. I'll I'll talk to somebody and say. You need to make this happen. He did a phenomenal okay, job. Okay, I can say Joshua. Joshua allowed me. Yeah, to Joshua it. allowed me. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Nick, you can send the list uh, when you have them compiled. I'm excited. I haven't even looked uh, at the chat. I, I get fed the questions on WhatsApp. I'm going to look right now and see what's happening. Oh, we've got fire emojis. We've got thank yous. Got fire trucks, it looks like, as well. So that's, I mean, you need fire trucks for the fire emojis, and that's important. All this fire. Let me just message Nick. I don't know if he's, if he's tuned he's out. Awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we were talking about Biley Funk. Uh, let's just talk about Biley Funk. It hits really hard in the club. Because it is just like a big subby bass hit with some some really crazy Brazilian style percussion, but I think it, it I think they need to branch out on what they use for that rhythmic pattern the do da da do da da, like it's they actually use the same sample on I know. a lot I, of tracks. I, I have it. Oh, you've got the original. I, I got the one sample pack once, and it has all the samples that are being used in every By the Funk track. The shouts, the, the rhythm, the bass notes. It's like one sample pack that everybody seems to use. And the, 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 the melody is 
bum, 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 and that's all it is over and over and over. But I, I mean, like I said, some of them hit really hard in the club. And the reps and the reps go hard. Yeah. And they're pretty vicious too. I won't translate I them here. I won't translate them here on stream, but uh, better not. <laughs> yeah, they they go hard. Um, the future classics collection winners: Leepy Leo, L E I P E L E O, Panda F U or Panda Fu. Congrats! Yes. Tusca Musicas. Tusca Musicas, you are also the winner of the Future Classics bundle. Uh, make sure to email support at Plugin Boutique with your name and what you've won. We also have another winner of the Future Classics, which is Farhi Horak. That's F A R H I H O R A K. Congratulations. Future Classics coming at you. Now, the Classics Collection with the massive Absinthe FM8 and Replica. Winners are Sed Hawkins, Latola, I believe that's L A T O A L L A, Ses Sessions 81, and David Hernandez Garcia. Well done. And if I can get, I, I, yeah, I need the I need the air horns and the drum rolls to get the double collection winner right now. Dro Burt Baker, you win it, you win it all, you win massive Absinthe Five FM8 replica Super Eight form track one and a mod pack with coral flare and phases. My friend, you are the big big winner winner chicken dinner of the day, and that's it. We're going to leave a, li a list of all the winners in the video description or in the first comment as well if you missed it and you're re-watching. Um, again, email support at pluginboutique.com and we will get you sorted with your codes. And one last time, thank you so much, Marcel, for taking the time today. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you and I look forward to uh, doing it again and visiting you in Germany when I'm finally over there. Oh yeah, pleasure was mine. Looking forward to that. All right. So everybody who's watching still, thank you very much for tuning in. we got a lot more coming uh, in the months to come. Some really big names going to be popping by. So make sure to hit the subscribe button uh, to keep up to date when we're doing these things. So that's it for now. And we will see you in the next live stream or video.